Good evening, this is CTV News for Wednesday, October 30th. I'm Makia Turner. And I'm Rochelle Metzger. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, two separate sexual assaults and robberies in Hyattsville have residents on edge today. At about 1.15 yesterday afternoon, a man approached two women in the 6700 block of Bellcrest Road, pulled out a handgun and forced them into this wooded area behind Northwestern High School. After demanding property, he then sexually assaulted one of the women. A short time later, less than 100 yards away, the same suspect approached two males and one female, once again demanding property. He then sexually assaulted the female victim before running away. A little bit of a safety concern because I mean it can happen to anybody. It um, doesn't matter who they are or, or what and the time of the day it happened and made it, uh, you know, did raise a couple red flags. Um, I think some of it should also be um, people in general should be able to, it, you know, be a little aware of the situation but at the same time they shouldn't have to feel that way at like one something in the afternoon. I'm usually aware of my surroundings. My husband get on me all the time about, you know, watching out and when I get in the car, I lock my doors first thing. Um, not go out as late as I was doing before. Um, just try to be, you know, as safe as I can. This is not a safe building. So I don't, you know, I, I'm sorry that it happened. You, you know. talked to management, you said about the doors? Yes, I said something about the, uh, the young lady, about people coming in and out you know, freely. It's, they're supposed to be checked or signed in or whatever else, but it's not. And you can walk right around the back right now and you can walk right on in the building. The suspect remains at large. The adult male was last seen wearing camouflage pants and a red baseball cap with black or blue trim. If you have any information on these cases, you're asked to call the sexual assault unit. The number is 301-772-4908. And with more on this story, we go to Gina Barti. She tells us that the police are back on the scene tonight as they continue their investigation. Well, police are very concerned about the brazen midday attacks that occurred yesterday in this Hyattsville neighborhood. So they are out canvassing the neighborhood, going door to door, alerting residents of the vicious nature of these attacks. Clearly yesterday he was not in the normal mind frame of the criminal who was trying to surreptitiously commit a crime and then get away with it. He was committing this crime in front of other witnesses in the middle of the day and obviously a very uh, residential style neighborhood. So. This is not the normal acts of a criminal, not that criminal actions are normal by any sense, but this is a shocking, shocking crime. So uh, clearly we're saying to the people in and around this community, be vigilant and if you see something, please, please call us with any information, no matter how minor you may think it is, it could be that small tip that uh, breaks open this case for us. Now, police are asking all residents to be on alert for the suspect that they described in the flyer. And if they have any information, to please call the CID Sexual Assault Unit. Reporting in Hyattsville, Gina Barti, CTV News. Thanks, Gina. And once again, you are urged to contact authorities if you have any information on these assaults. Over 590 arrests are made in Prince George's County during a three-month sweep that ended this month. Governor Martin O'Malley, Sheriff Melvin High, and other local officials announced the results of the operation during a press conference this afternoon. The effort involved multiple law enforcement agencies and targeted violent offenders. Officials say over 1,000 warrants were served in the undertaking. double-digit declines in every single crime category and I think what the chief will tell you as well is that they're sustainable. I had a conversation with the chief a couple of days ago as we talked about a 22 percent decline in robberies, a 13 percent decline in car thefts, all the way across 10 percent decline in homicides. The numbers are phenomenal but they are sustainable. They are sustainable because of the work that has been done here. The warrants were for violent offenders, for murder, rape, robbery, assaults, uh, those kinds of issues. And so um, we've been able to, over the three years that we've been uh, at this effort, reduce uh, the backlog of warrants by about 11,000. And so the posters that you see here are some of the individuals that were, work, were arrested as a result of this initiative. Over 42,000 warrants remain in the office of the sheriff's backlog. 
There's a bit of good news for people looking to sign up for insurance under the Affordable Care Act. Some of the glitches on Maryland's Health Exchange website have been worked out, allowing more people to sign up for coverage. Still not everything has been fixed. Today we talked to Governor O'Malley about what's being done to improve the state's site. We're working out our kinks. We are not there yet, but it's working much better than it was a month ago. As I look at this, this challenge, there's two phases here. The shopping phase, if you will, when people will come in and browse 10, 12, 15, 20 times before they, before they decide uh, uh, what uh, insurance policy and, and that they want to purchase. And then there's the enrollment time, which comes January 1. So we are getting uh, better and better at the user experience on the sh for the ability to browse and to shop. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do for the actual enrollment so that people don't have gaps in their coverage. The site opened for enrollment four weeks ago. Could a higher state tax on cigarette sales lead Marylanders to a healthier lifestyle? What well, results from a new report would sure make you think so. Public health leaders convene in Baltimore to discuss the effects of the Maryland's $2,008 increase on cigarette pack sales. According to the new data, the tax has helped reduce smoking and fund health care coverage for Marylanders. Well, it's been had a tremendous impact. 27% uh, reduction in uh, youngsters that are smoking, 17% reduction in adults that are smoking, uh, revenue that has increased that has helped cover expand Medicaid by 100,000 individuals. So over the last 15 years, Maryland has dropped smoking by 32%, double the national average. The number of packs sold every year went from 385 million to 200 million. That's dramatic. And what that shows is when you increase cigarette taxes, you reduce smoking, you save lives, and you bring in money that can be used for health care. State taxes on cigarette sales have increased three times since 1999.